title of this message is Jesus, Lord of all. Jesus Christ is Lord. Those four words change the world, change my life, and change your life too if you have confessed and professed Him. He is Lord. This is the core and central truth of the Christian faith. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus is everything. Christ is all. And if you would find your way to the book of Colossians, I want to show you in God's Word the truth that transforms our lives when Jesus is Lord of life and Lord of all, when He is Lord of your life and Lord of mine. Colossians is written in the first century to combat a heresy concerning Christ and is full of rich doctrine regarding the nature of Christ Himself. And we're told that Jesus is the Christ of creation. I pick a word every year, hang my thoughts, my attention, my focus. Last year it was the word favor and we saw the favor of God in ways unexpected. This year my word is wonder. I, I stand amazed in wonder of the grace of God, in wonder of the glories of God. And when you look into a starlit night or even through the rain and the beauty of a cloudy day, you can see the wonders of God's creation. And the Bible tells us that God created the heavens and the earth, and the Scripture teaches us that Christ is God, that Jesus is the God of the cosmos. He's the God of all creation. For example, look in Colossians 1 and verse 16, for by Him all things are created in heaven and in earth, visible and invisible whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through Him and for Him. And He is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. The universe is His plan. This world is in His hands. There's an old gospel song which says He's got the whole world in His hands. It goes on to say, He's got you and me, brother, you and me, sister, in His hands. By Him, life holds together. And Jesus, because He is Lord, and as a believer and follower of Jesus, you are professing and confessing Jesus Christ is Lord, that means He is truly to be Lord of our lives, all of our lives. Every part, every parcel, Jesus does not want some secondary space or place in your life. He will not accept it. Whoever got the idea that you could be a part-time follower of Jesus? No, if you say yes to Christ, you're saying yes to obey Him because Christ is, what does it mean Christ is Lord? It means that Christ is sovereign, it means Christ is supreme, it means Christ is superior, it means Christ is above all. No rivals. No rivals. So the question is, because Christ is on the throne of the universe, is Christ on the throne of your life? Is Christ on the little throne that sits in your heart? Because either Christ is there or self is there. Is Christ Lord of your life? That's the question. A page over in Colossians 2, verses 6 through 10, listen to these words. And I really want to encourage you this year to bring your Bible to church. We're always going to support you with screen notes, but don't rely on the screen notes. That's like you know, looking on someone else's paper. <laughs> Look on your paper. So in Colossians 2, verse 6, 
Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, what does it say? So walk in Him. This is walking in the Lordship, under the Lordship of Christ, rooted and built up in Him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. For in Him, Jesus, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have been filled in Him, who is the head of all rule and authority. All rule. Christ reigns. Christ rules. And Christ is everything. Look in chapter 3, verse 4. When Christ, who is your life, Jesus is life, Paul said, to live is Christ, to die is gain. Who is your life? When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will appear with him in glory. This isn't the end of the story. Christ is coming again. He's coming in great glory and great power. He rules. He reigns. And we will appear with him in glory. Christ, your life. Look at verse 11 of chapter 3. Here then is not Greek or Jew, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free. But Christ is all and in all. So I want us to make that confession together right now before we go any further. I want you to repeat with me this profession, this confession that Christ is all, that Jesus Christ is Lord. Just four words, Jesus Christ is Lord. Say it, Jesus Christ is Lord. He is. And therefore, verse 17 of chapter 3, whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything, everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Jesus is Lord. So let's work that out in our lives. If we are confessing and professing that Jesus Christ is Lord, what does that mean? It means that daily, And deliberately, I am to crown him king of my life and lord of my life in some specific areas that I'm going to mention today. Now, I want you to put on your PF flyers and run with me this morning. If you don't know what a PF flyer is, that's probably good because that means you're a lot younger than I am. It's an old tennis shoe. But get ready to run. Get ready to roll. Because I want to show you five or six, depending on our time, specifics in which Jesus is Lord of our lives. And I'm going to put the sentences or the points of the message in an affirmation so that you can affirm this for yourselves. Number one, Jesus be the Lord of my temple. Jesus be the Lord of my temple temple. We just read that Christ lives in us, that Christ is alive in us. The Bible says in Colossians uh, uh, 1 verse 27 that Christ is in you the hope of glory. And therefore, you, we as followers of Jesus, we are the holy habitation of God Almighty. The Spirit of the living God is alive in us. Jesus Christ lives in His temple. And you are the temple of God, not a building made with hands, not a human construction, but a divine construction in which God has given us this spiritual temple in which Christ is alive. Jesus lives in you. You are the temple of God. Listen to the words of the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. You should turn there. And uh, mark this in your Bible if you haven't already. Do you not know 
that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God. You are not your own, and you were bought with a price, so glorify God with your body. That is, in our physical life, as in our spiritual lives, we are to glorify, magnify our God. To glorify God means to make Him large, to give Him honor, to give Him praise. And because we have been purchased by Christ, it says we are bought with a price, the precious blood of Jesus. We are then possessed by Christ. Christ lives in you. And because Christ lives in you and in me, that means that every day is a day with God. Every day is God's day. Every step we take is a step that he gives us. This is the body. This is the suit, the earth suit that our Lord has given us. And we, therefore, are the temple of the Spirit. That means that your eyes don't belong to you. What you see, they belong to God. They belong to Christ. Your ears, what you hear. Your mouth, what you speak. Your hands, your feet, your body. On some days when I pray at the beginning of the day, I go from head to foot, dedicating every part of me to Christ, all the heart of me, every part of me. When I was a young man called to preach the gospel, I was 15 years of age. And here I am still doing it, still called. I'm going to keep doing it as long as God gives me strength because it's the call of God. And you know what I said to God when God called me? All the heart of me came out of a camp song. All the heart of me, every part of me. God, you have all of me. Now, there have been times when I've taken back some things that belong to God, and I've tried to control some things that only He can control. But my life, my body, everything about me is under the Lordship of Christ. You should take care of your body. It's the only one you have. Take care of yourselves physically. Because I've discovered that discipleship produces personal discipline in life. My walk with Christ encourages me to be my best. Listen to 2 Timothy 2, 20 and 21. Or just verse 21. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from that which is dishonorable, there was a couple of occasions when Jesus went into the temple in Jerusalem, the physical temple, and he cleansed the temple, corrected the abuses that were going on in that physical temple. And you know, Jesus can still do that today. He can walk into the temple and chastise and correct and change things around. He has freedom to do that in your life and mine, doesn't he? Does your temple need cleansing today? For it says he cleanses himself from that which is dishonorable so that he would be a vessel, honorable, for honorable use, set apart as holy and useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. Why do we take care of the temple? Why do we take care of our bodies? Present our bodies as living sacrifices to God because Jesus is Lord of the temple. Are you taking some temple time to exercise, to rest, to take care of yourself physically? We all want to be instruments, according to the Scripture, for God's special purposes. You ought to exercise not so you'll look buff, but so that God can use you as long as He can for His service, made useful to the Master, prepared to do any good work. Make the affirmation, Jesus be the Lord of my temple. I thought as I was preparing this message, this would be a good sermon series. I'm going to get it all in in one message. Secondly, Jesus be Lord of my time. Our time. That means our schedule. That means every day, every year belongs to Him. When Jesus is Lord, we realize that every day is a gift. That all of life comes from His hands. 
Ephesians 5.16 says that we are to make the best use of time because the days are evil. We only have so much time in these evil days before Christ comes. So what we do, we do now. It means to seize the opportunity, to take advantage of every day, to seize the day. If you're wasting your life, if you're wasting your time, you're wasting your life. I know in the midst of all of this plague, this pandemic, this virus, we're all waiting around for things. Common, I hear people say, well, I'm just waiting for things to be normal again. Just waiting for things to get back to normal. Well, I have to tell you, that's not the way I've been thinking. First of all, I don't want things to get back to normal. I want them to get back to so abnormal. So many Christians think that being a Christian is just being normal, and we're not, we're not unusual enough. We're not different enough. More about that later. But this is how I'm thinking. I don't want to just tread water or take up time waiting for the vaccine to get here or waiting for herd immunity to happen whenever that happens. Many think if I can just wait out to the end of this thing, if I can just get through this month or get to the end of summer or get to the end of the year, but life isn't lived by the year. It's not lived by the month. It's not lived by the week. It's lived by the day. It's lived by the moment. I don't want to waste a moment. I don't want to sit around waiting for something to happen to serve God. Life is here and now. It's been said that there are two days on the Christian's calendar, this day and that day. This day being today is the day of salvation. This day, meaning this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And that day, Paul said, I know whom I believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed unto him against that day. The day when Christ comes, the day we stand before him. So in a very real sense, it's this day and that day. Chapter 3, verse 1 of Colossians says, Set your affection not on things below, but on things above. Live today for things that are above. Be heavenly minded in your habits. This is not a time for idleness. Second Peter 1, 10 and 11. Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent. That's a word we don't hear today that much. Be all the more diligent. To make your calling and election sure. For if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. The qualities of Christian character. You will never fall. And then you will enter richly into the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven. I don't want to go limping into heaven. I want to go bursting into eternity. Hands held high. Victorious in Jesus. And the way that happens is that it happens through daily diligence. Which gets back to my point, my affirmation. Lord, be the Lord of my time. Imagine if some had just taken all that time you spent on Netflix, burging and purging on Netflix. Uh, you could be a Bible scholar had you read your Bible that much. We're wasting a lot of time. Be diligent. Be diligent. Then, Lord, be the Lord of my treasure. My treasure. You've heard it said, give the Lord your time, your talent, your treasure. It's kind of a Christian motto. Your time, your talent, your treasure. Well, it is true that not only does do our bodies, our, our temple belong to God, but our treasures, what we have, our possession, because the Bible says every good and perfect gift comes down from above. This means that we are not owners but stewards of God's property. What we have belongs to Him, all of it. Not just the 10%, not just the first tenth, but all of it, everything, everything belongs to Jesus. Is Jesus the Lord of your finances? We live under the authority of Christ 
and therefore we will give generously and sacrificially. The tithes is the Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, don't lay up treasures on earth, but lay up treasures in heaven. That's what our Lord said. And therefore giving is in obedience to Him. What did Jesus say? If you love me, keep my what? My commandments. Giving is obedience. Giving is dependence. Giving is confidence in God's provision. And this is just a good time for me once again to thank you, God, for your faithfulness to our church through the generosity and the sacrificial giving of your people. Amen. I'm still just astounded by this outpouring of God's people in this church. The goodness of God to supply for us so that the ministries could reach people and serve and feed. We served over one million meals last year to people who all in the name of Jesus. We saw 500 baptisms plus thousands online receiving and responding to the gospel of Christ. And we do that because you enable the church to move forward. But it's not even the motivation of the church. It's our motivation because Christ is Lord. I won't, I won't have to beg you to give if Christ is Lord of your life, Lord of your possessions. Nobody would have to twist your arm. Is Jesus Lord of your treasure? All of it. And then, Jesus be Lord of my tongue. <laughs> That's a good one. Now, on the, uh, on the downside, that would mean that I don't want my tongue to express negativity. I don't want there to be, as the Bible talks about, gossip, criticism, slander, lies, anger, profanity, blasphemy. Is Jesus the Lord of your tongue, your mouth? what you say. But of course, in the positive vein, it means that my tongue, my words are to be used to glorify God. The psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise. Through our praise and our proclamation of the gospel. The apostles were told never to speak in the name of Jesus. They said, we cannot help but speak of those things which we've seen and heard. Amen. Jesus is Lord. You can't stop the Christian who is so full of Jesus. Our commander in chief gave us the marching orders. Our Lord told us what to do. Acts 1.8, after you're filled with the Holy Spirit, go into all the world and preach the gospel and make disciples. We're told in the Great Commission that we are to mark those disciples in baptism and mature them in Christian living. When Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, it's not just the things you don't say. It's what you say. It's wonderful to praise Jesus in church. Only Jesus. There was Jesus. Jesus. We love it. But is His name often on your lips? to your family and friends. It's His gospel in your mouth. May Jesus be the Lord of our tongues. May Jesus be the Lord of our trials. We've had funerals this year. We've had illness this year. Heartache and heartbreak. Trials. But even then, if you are a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's Lord of your trials. It's not out of control. We're to steward our suffering even as we steward our money. When Jesus is Lord, it's impossible to be defeated in your life. When Christ is your life, as Paul said, to live is Christ, to die is gain. We're all dying. We're all on our way to eternity. And with it come hardships and heartaches and heartbreaks. But every battle, every burden 
is an honor to it is an opportunity to confess that Jesus is the Lord, even in this. Amen. One of my favorite illustrations of this is Paul and Silas in prison in Philippi. It's dark, it's midnight. They've been beaten. They're hanging in chains, facing execution and death for preaching the gospel. And yet they're singing. They're praising God. That means Jesus was Lord of their trials. You can't defeat a man or a woman like that. When Jesus is Lord of all, because even the worst of times become the best of times when we are advancing the gospel of Christ. I said it a couple of weeks ago, what if this terrible year back 2020 became your best year ever because you responded, received Christ or renewed your commitment to the Lordship of Christ. What if that tough time became the best time of your life? So Jesus be Lord of my trials. May Jesus be Lord of my talents. I'll come back that, to that in another time, but just simply to say you have been gifted by the Holy Spirit. With spiritual abilities, these are talents that are given by God. These are not toys to tool with or to play with rather, but tools to work with, and we're to put our spiritual talents to work. Do you have a ministry? Do you have a role in the kingdom of God? We have a big job in front of us as a church, rebuilding things. We need everybody in. We need everybody to say, I'll take my talents, whatever they be, large or small, seen or unseen. Jesus is Lord of my talents. Then Jesus, may Jesus be Lord of my thoughts. The only way to change the way you live is to change the way you think. Because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23, 7. It is through prayer that we elevate our thoughts to God. Is Jesus the Lord of your thoughts, the way you think? Because the way you think, as the man thinks, the man goes. Finally, Philippians 4, 8, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. My dear brother and friend Zig Ziglar used to sit right there on that row right in front of me there. He was one of my greatest encouragers, and Zig used to say, It's not your aptitude, but it's your attitude that determines your altitude in life. This is why we give the first day of the week to the Lord. This is the Lord's day. It's the first day. We come and set our minds and our affection on the things of Christ, the things of God. Elevate our thinking with great hymns and songs and spiritual songs. We we advance our mind and our thinking, filling it full with the Word of God and so on. The first day of the week, but... I also say, just as the first day of the week and the first part of your income, but I would also say the first part of your day belongs to God. I've made it my practice and my discipline every year of my life to begin my day seeking after God. Proverbs 8, 34, blessed is the one who listens to me watching daily at my gate, waiting beside my door. Isaiah 50 and verse 4. Morning by morning, he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear all that he has taught. Make your first appointment of the day with Jesus. He's your Lord. He's your life. Just as you would tune an instrument before the concert. You wouldn't wait till the concert to tune it. I say tune your instrument before the day begins. Tune your thoughts and your affection, your heart to the Lord. Remember, our relationship with God is a living, lasting relationship. It represents our friendship with God. And therefore, we walk with God every day, beginning at the first of the day. Yes, our thoughts, elevate them. Set your mind. Again, Colossians 3, 1, set your mind on things above and not on things below. It's your outlook and your uplook that will determine your outlook in life. One final thing briefly. Jesus be the Lord of my times. I said time the first time. 
but I'm saying times now. Psalm 31, 15 says, our, our times are in his hands. This is a time that we wonder, Lord, what are you doing? A lot of disappointment. God, what are you doing in our country? What's happening to our society? What's happening to our culture? What's happening to churches? So much compromise. So much darkness in the world. So much disease. But our times are in his hands. Because he is Lord. Joe Biden may be president, but Jesus is king. And Jesus is Lord. Amen. Times change. But Jesus never changes. Right. Hebrews 13, 8, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And one final scripture is 1 Timothy 6. 1 Timothy 6. Just go forward to 1 Timothy 6 and look at verses 14 and 15. And we'll be finished. To keep the commandments unstained and free from reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. There it is again. Jesus is coming. Jesus is King. Jesus is Lord. Which he will display at the proper, what? Time. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords. President Woodrow Wilson said years ago, I would rather temporarily fail. He was talking about America and democracy. But he said, I would rather temporarily fail with a cause that will ultimately succeed than to temporarily succeed with a cause that will ultimately fail. All human authority, all governments will bow before King Jesus. While it may appear at times that we as Christians are getting the short end of a big stick, in his time, this is not his time. I mean, he's in control of time. He's in control of our lives. But, you know, the devil's, the, the devil's rampant. The devil's moving across the world. The devil in his darkness is moving. This is the devil's time. It's the devil's world. We wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness. He's the God of this age. It's his time. And in the last times, it's going to get worse. It's not going to get better. You ready for that? But in his times, Jesus, he will be revealed. King of kings, Lord of all, because Jesus Christ is is Lord and he's coming and he will establish his eternal kingdom forever and ever and until then until then we have the responsibility to go into a world filled with the rav beaten by down by the ravages of sin and the harshness of life and we go with good news we go with the message of hope that Jesus Christ is Lord would you bow your heads with me in prayer every head bow Thank you, Lord, for these promises, these great truths. We lean in to you today. We love you, Lord. And as your church, as your people, we call out to you. We cry out to you. We confess you as Lord. Be Lord of all, all in us. Lord, be the Lord of my temple. Lord, be the Lord of my tongue of my time, of my times, of my talents, of my treasure, is my trials. Lord, all of it, all of it, Jesus, belongs to you. If you don't know him, this is the time to confess it. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says it this way. Are you listening? If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 
Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord Jesus will be saved. So right where you are at home, on a screen somewhere, in this room, invite Christ into your life. Say, Jesus, be the Lord of my life. I ask you to come into my life, to be my Savior, my God, my Master, my friend. I confess my sin, I repent of my sin, and I trust in you, and you only, to be my Lord, to be my life. And online, you can go to the screen and type in 74788, that's the text, and type in the word Jesus, text to 74788, text in Jesus, and we're standing by to encourage you, to give you a Bible to help you in your faith, to get you started. And right here in this room, I'm going to ask you to make a public decision for Christ by coming forward. In the balcony, we have our ministers upstairs to receive you there. If Jesus is Lord, then openly confess Him. Openly profess Christ as your Savior today. On this lower level, our pastors are right here. For all of you on the lower level, I'm going to ask you to come forward. In your act of coming forward, will be saying, I am professing my faith in Jesus Christ as Lord. Will you do that today? Don't harden your heart. The Bible says, he who is often reproved shall suddenly be cut off, and that without remedy. The Holy Spirit is breathing on you today, giving you life. This is a divine appointment. Come today, profess your faith. There are others who need to come and join this church. Jesus, Lord of your life, you'll be in his church. If it's not this one, it'll be somewhere else where Christ is preached. But if you are a Christian, you want to be a part of the Lord's church. So come today under the Lordship of Christ and say, I want to join Prestonwood. If you've not been baptized, that's a Lordship decision. If you've not been baptized as a believer, say, I want to be baptized because Jesus, I want to confess him and profess him as my Lord. Now, Lord, take this time of decision. May your Holy Spirit work in every heart, in every life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us for worship at Prestonwood. As you heard earlier, if you made a decision for Christ, please text JESUS to 74788. We would love to connect with you and give you these great resources to help you grow in your faith. One is a New Believer's Bible with helpful notes to help you study God's Word. The other is a book by Pastor Jack Graham on the next steps to take as you pursue this new life in Christ. As we close, I'd like to thank you for your faithful giving to support Prestonwood and the work God is doing through our ministries. If you would like to give, text the word GIVE to 74788 or visit prestonwood.org give. It's been a joy worshiping with you and we look forward to seeing you again soon.